Hello everyone, welcome to part six, the final part to my How to Read Tarot series. My name is Madame Macabre and today we are going to be wrapping up our study guide for learning how to read tarot quickly. Today we are going to be picking up where we left off last time with our final minor arcana suit, the suit of cups. Whereas last time the suit of swords had to do with intellect, logic, and thinking, Cups is the suit at the other end of the spectrum having to do with your feelings. So thinking with your heart rather than your head, so to say, cups are everything to do with your emotions. All right, ready to take notes? This should finish up your study guide. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Starting first of all, aces being ones, the ace of cups. So as an ace, naturally representing the beginning of a cycle, the Ace of Cups represents new beginnings. And in this case, being the suit of cups with emotions, it's new beginnings related to things of the heart. You could perceive this card as meaning new relationships. Perhaps there's a new passion in your heart. Or if you've been trying to start a family, this is an excellent card because it can signal new babies or pregnancies. Now, in reverse, however, this card isn't quite as happy. It can generally mean that a relationship might be starting to hit a downturn. Though it's not all doom and gloom, if this appears, it's more of a warning that you need to keep an eye out for it and see if there are things that you can do to save it, if you want to, that is. It could also talk about things with the heart, so a passion. Your special interest, so to say, may begin to start fizzling out and no longer be the main thing that inspires you. You could find yourself beginning to slow lose interest in it. And finally, this card could also speak of repressing your emotions or potentially letting them rule you depending on where in the spread it shows up. Next up, we have the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups is an excellent card to get for relationships. It is almost entirely speaking of people and things coming together. So when this card appears, it speaks of new potential romance or potentially very, very good new best friends. You will click immediately with the person this card speaks of. You will know the moment you see them that that is that person. And the feelings will be mutual. This card speaks of a spark. So if you've been desperately trying to find a romantic partner or really hopeful to find some new friends, this is a great card to get. In reverse, however, this card speaks about potentially going through a breakup. There is some serious disharmony in your relationship. Mind you, this could be either breaking up with a lover or breaking up with a friend because it's no longer healthy and it's become toxic. There is an imbalance in a relationship. And depending on the context, this could be something that you could still fix or something that you must realize you have to let go. Following that, we have the Three of Cups. This is a very social card. When the Three of Cups appears in your spread, it is telling you that it is time to get together with the people you care about. The Three of Cups heralds social gatherings, togetherness with loved ones, and also speaks of parties, celebrations, and even weddings. It's a card of community, and when it appears, it's sort of telling you what you need right now is to be around other people. That is what's gonna be best for you. And when it appears, it could either be telling you that what you need right now is to be around other people. That is what your spirit needs. Or it's foretelling some community celebrations that are upcoming. Now, when this card appears in reverse, it has a slightly different meaning. This could potentially be telling you that three is a crowd. You are feeling like a third wheel. And potentially, this could also be a warning if it's paired with some other cards, that somebody is being unfaithful. It could also speak on social isolation and telling you that you desperately need to go out and seek some interactions with other people. And finally, it could also be telling you that you might be socializing too much and you have an imbalance and you need to actually get back to work. And next up, we have the Four of Cups. 
The Four of Cups speaks of frustration. As you can see from the guy in the picture, he has three perfectly good cups right in front of him, but you know what? He is sick of those cups, he is bored, and all he can think about is this tantalizing cup way over here. So when this card appears, it's sort of telling you that you have much to feel emotionally fulfilled about. Those cups there, you've got enough to be thankful for. but. There is something in your spirit that is still missing, leading you to feel longing for this thing over here. You're just not satisfied, and it's left you feeling kind of apathetic and just over your current situation. That being said, when this card appears in reverse, it could speak that there is an opportunity that will be right under your nose, but if you aren't careful to catch it, you're going to miss out. And alternatively, linking back to the original meaning, this card could be a warning that because you are so focused on this thing over here that you don't have, you're going to miss the blessings around you and risk losing those too. Finally, you might have been feeling bored or unsatisfied or apathetic. And that... And finally... Speaking back to the first meaning again, if you have been feeling bored or unsatisfied or apathetic, this card could also speak that you will soon come out of this period and be inspired and something will relight your fire. Following that, we have the Five of Cups. I like to call this card the Don't Cry Over Spilled Milk card. When the Five of Cups appears, it is telling you that you cannot just sit and pout forever over the things that have been lost. Five, again, being a number of change. The Five is telling you, what can you change about the way you are handling this loss? How can you shift your paradigm to get through this in an actually productive manner? There is no point in moping around if this card appears. It's essentially calling you out and saying like, okay, okay, you've had your chance to be sad, but look, right behind you, there are two cups. You are so busy crying over these three that spilled, you are neglecting the ones behind you and you risk losing those too. Now in reverse, this card also can tell you that you may have been disappointed by a loss, but you got the lesson of the upright card and you know what? You're over it. You're starting to accept it and move on. You're putting on your big person pants and you are striding forward away from the problem. You also could be ready to forgive and accept what happened if it was something that was done to you. Then we have the Six of Cups. This card can have several different meanings, one of which, if it appears for you, could be telling you that you are have or you will return to a familiar place or there will be a familiar person from the past reappearing in your life. It could also be telling you that you need to get in touch with your roots. And finally, it could be telling you that, you know what, you've been working super hard and you have been cracking down on everything. Don't forget to embrace your inner child. It's okay. You are allowed to be in touch with that softer side of yourself. There's nothing wrong with it. Now when in reverse, the Six of Cups can tell you that you might actually find yourself stuck in the past, unable to move forward. Nostalgia and thinking back on the good old days is good and everything, but if you let yourself become obsessed with that, you're never going to be able to move on happily into the future. Additionally, the appearance of this card in the reverse position could be telling you that you are stuck in an old way of thinking. Your old, outdated ideas could be hindering you and holding you back, and you need to let yourself learn some new tricks and a new paradigm. And calling back to one of the previous meanings, this could also be a warning that you are too in touch with your inner child and you are actually being naive and immature. You're just being a big old baby. So you need to dial that back in and remember you have to strike a balance. And finally, when this card appears in reverse, one of the more unfortunate meanings is that it could be hinting that there was actually some abuse in your past. Following that, we have the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is a major card of introspection. As you can see from the person in the art, there are a ton of cups around them. But there's also the danger of this basilisk here. You see, this card is a warning that you do not want to rush into a decision and just haphazardly choose one of these cups because you don't know which one has poison in it and you don't know which one has the reward in it. So with that in mind, take a step back and reflect. Perhaps you don't even have all of the information yet. 
Ultimately, you need to take your time to ensure you are actually making the correct decision. Now, in the reverse position, this card could be telling you that you may know something on the inside, but you are choosing to repress it because it would conflict with a choice you want to make, i.e., you know in your gut that this cup is going to be poison for you, but gosh darn if it's not tempting and tantalizing, so I'm just gonna ignore my gut, ignore that feeling and that instinct because I want this in the short term. It's sort of a warning. Don't do not do that. You know. You know how it's going to turn out. Please don't do it. Additionally, following in the same line of thought, you could also be deluding yourself to something if this appears. You have wanted something so badly or you have not wanted something so badly, you are willing to lie to yourself to the point where you might actually believe it. This is a warning to really examine your situation. And then finally, a less ominous meaning behind this card could be that you are finally breaking through the fog and you think you actually know what the right choice is. You've taken your time, you've stepped back, you've thought about it, and you know what? You have a gut feeling, you know the right choice, and you are finally reaching a point where you are ready to make that decision. Next, we have the Eight of Cups. I find the Eight of Cups to be a rather sad card. You see, you have all of this in front of you so much, yet it's not enough to fill the void, and you're feeling sad, lonely, and ultimately disappointed. You should be fulfilled, but it's not enough. When this card appears, it could be telling you that the reason it's not enough is because you need some self-development. You need a spiritual journey. Some soul-searching is the only way you're going to be able to find what it is that you're actually missing. Don't be afraid to take that time away alone with yourself to discover who you are and what you need, because it's the only way you're going to find happiness at this point. And in reverse, the Eight of Cups speaks that you know something is missing in your heart, but you're not sure which way to go to fix it. A part of you wants to explore new options, but then another part of you is scared to lose what you have. You kind of know that you need to make the spiritual journey, but you're not really at a point where you feel ready to take it. And you're going to have to take the steps to figure out what you need to do to get to that point. Because just like when it's upright, regardless of how this card appears, you need to do soul searching. Nearing the end of the apex, we have our Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups in Upright is one of the most awesome cards you can get because it is often called the Wish card. Wishes fulfilled, comfort, and happiness. When this card appears, you can expect things to go right. It is a sign that all your hard work is paying off. The thing you really want is going to come to be. So this is very exciting to get. It's a very positive card. All that being said, however, the Nine of Cups is a bit of a double-edged sword because when it appears in reverse, you've got yourself a Wishmaster situation. You got what you wished for, but at what cost? Or was it really what you actually wanted? Now that you have what you thought you desired, you're not satisfied like you thought you would be, or it turns out to be horrifying and you wish you had never wished for it at all. And finally, this card could also be telling you that you got what you wanted and you are happy, but are you letting it turn you into a greedy and materialistic person? Be very mindful of that when this card appears. And finally, ending the cycle, we have the Ten of Cups. Here we have the Ten of Cups, which I like to call the Happily Ever After card. When this card appears in the upright position, it is essentially telling you you have reached the pinnacle of your emotionally satisfying journey. It represents a happy home, a happy life, aligned values, and everything for your storybook ending that you could envision that is spiritually fulfilling. It's a very very, very happy card to see, and it especially offers hope if you have been in a not-so-great situation and you've been working hard to get out of that. In reverse, however, this card tells you that the values you thought were shared, potentially with your partner or your close group, are not actually as aligned as you thought. 
This could also speak of a broken home, maybe a broken marriage or long-standing relationship. And finally, it could also mean that you might be neglecting your loved ones in the pursuit of material goals, such as career and money. After all, this is water, the emotional suit. Make sure you're not out of whack. Meet those emotional needs before you lose your happily ever after. Okay, moving right along. Now we have the court cards, starting, of course, with the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is one of possibilities, curiosity, creative opportunities, and emotional matters. This card is telling you, you should be open to trying new things. Keep that mind open and you never know what new passion or people you'll meet. This card is a sign that now is the time to explore new sides of yourself because you never know where you will be pleasantly surprised. Now, in reverse, this card could be telling you that you might be keeping your project or passion a secret. Maybe you have a really good idea you're excited about, but you have to hide it or you feel like you have to hide it because someone is going to steal it from you. And if this is the case, this card is telling you that what you need to do to move forward is still keep it to yourself, but actively work on developing it. Once you have it on solid enough legs that it can stand on its own, then you can safely share it. Alternatively, this card could also be telling you that your inner critic might be judging you so hard that you shut things down. We've all been there, after all, where we don't even let ourselves explore something new if we're not automatically good at it. So don't shut yourself down. Then we have the Knight of Cups. Oftentimes the Knight of Cups is telling you that you need to now think with your heart. He is the knight in shining armor figure. He represents romance, charm, creativity. He can say that you have dreamed about what you want and you are now finally beginning to take actions and make it happen. This card also acts as a sign that you have finally begun taking action on making this passion a reality. You are going out and you are chasing that dream. As you go forward and you face trials and decisions, remember to not neglect your heart and feelings. It is always important to be wise and use our intellect, but at the end of the day, don't cut your heart out of the matter or you will be sad in the end. And finally, this card could also be foretelling of a new romantic opportunity on the horizon, so do keep an eye out. Sticking with that, in reverse, however, this card could be telling you that you are frustrated by the lack of romantic opportunities because none have been presenting themselves. Alternatively, this card could be telling you that you need to not keep such a dreamy view of life that you can't keep your feet on the ground. You might be overly emotional in your decisions, so the scale has tipped in the other direction. And alternatively, you may not be taking that action on that dream of yours, and this is a gentle reminder, hey, the time is good, this is a sign. Take that action, set things into motion. Followed by that, we have the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is the figure that is the nurturing mother. She is intuitive, calm, compassionate and sensitive. When this card appears, it can be telling you that you are a highly intuitive person and that you need to trust your gut and follow your heart. You also want to embody the energy of the queen. Take up the mantle of the nurturing figure, the mom friend, so to speak. Or alternatively, this card could also be speaking of someone in your life who is this for you. In reverse, this card could be telling you that you are finding yourself utterly lost and confused about an emotional manner, and you feel very cut off from that intuition. Maybe you even got so overly emotional that you clouded your own judgment. Alternatively, this card is a reminder that you have been so busy being the carer for everybody else that you've been neglecting your own emotional state and you are utterly drained. Maybe other people's emotions are draining you. It's so easy when you're that mom friend or that nurturing figure to just constantly think about what can I do to serve other people, even at your own expense. But it's so important to take care of your own needs and make yourself a priority as well. And finally, closing out our study guide, we have the King of Cups. 
The King of Cups is a master of diplomatic, emotional maturity. He is one that has perfect emotional balance and control. He is generous and he is compassionate. You can be the king or someone else can be the king, or this is a sign that you need to become the king. Either way, you need to harness that perfect balance of head and heart, just as the king does. You are in control of your emotions and you can help others regulate their own. Water rolls right off your back. You don't let it get under your skin. This is the perfect emotional and mental state you want to strive for. Now, when in reverse, you do not have this balance, and as a result, you might be emotionally lashing out at others. Maybe things aren't going how you'd like to, and it's making you volatile. Or, potentially, there are manipulative relationships in play. And you could also be being too hard on yourself if this appears. Finally, just as upright, this is someone who is compassionate and balanced and a very good person. In reverse, this card could be representing someone who is very emotionally manipulative and toxic. So if this card appears here, either check yourself and make sure you're not becoming this emotional bully or keep an eye out for someone who represents this and could be causing you trouble in the future. Well, there you have it. We have finally reached the end of this journey. If you have watched part one through this part six, congratulations. You now have everything you need for a study guide to get you on the fast track to reading tarot yourself. I know it can seem like a daunting journey, but this should help you break it down into more manageable bites so you can begin ticking away at it slowly. And remember, there is nothing wrong with needing to use your guide while you're learning. Eventually, it's awesome to work towards weaning yourself off of it, but in the meantime, this should make it a lot more manageable for you to get to work learning. After all, this is a living art and you will constantly be learning your entire life. I am too, believe me. Thank you so much for sticking all the way through to the end with me. I really hope that you have found this helpful and I hope that this can get you started on your tarot journey. But after today, we have officially concluded my How to Read Tarot series. As always, thank you so much for your time. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. But until next time, I'm afraid that's all we have. So stay safe, everyone, and Merry Met.